Hey, it's Luke. All right, we're talking about Drumazon 2. It came out just a few days ago, and I've seen a lot of people talk about it, but I haven't seen very many people mention these things here that are actually my favorite parts of it. So we'll go through these three right now. The first one is the randomizing, and I just love how they set it up in here. So if we take just the basic beat when you load it up, and we go over here to randomize, It's got a few interesting things where you can customize your randomization. So these here are the density buttons. So they'll decide how many of each of the drum sounds that you'll have in the randomized version. So if we turn a whole bunch of these way up, the open hats, the, and we hit next here, you notice it's just full. I don't know if we want to listen to this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to listen to this. But the interesting thing is you can change the density once you've done it. So over here, it's really, really full. And if we go to some of these, we can reduce a whole bunch of these until we have the type of sound that we're looking for. And what we'll do here is we'll try to give it a bit of a beat with the, the bass drum, just something a little bit more consistent. And so if you hit Command or control if you're on Windows, and you select all of these. The only thing that's sad is that you can't select a whole bunch at once. Like it would be nice if you could, like when you're selecting a bunch of files, if you could hit shift on the, hit the first one, then hit shift in the last one, and it would it would do that whole block. Hopefully they'll add that at some point. But uh, so we can go here, get rid of these bass drum hits and it still does not sound good at all. So let's reduce the density on all of these. We'll hit randomize again and see if we have some. So what's happening here is because we selected these here, it's randomizing all of those, but it's not touching the bass drum that we set and we set in there already. So we might just we might just mute some of these. So let's just mute the toms to start and maybe the crash and maybe even the rock. So we've got a little bit of a beat going. So you go until you find something. But there's something really interesting that I haven't seen on other plugins uh, where you could do randomization. And that's the previous button. So if we're hitting next and next and we keep finding something, and we're like, oh, wait a second, this last one sounded good. And I'm sure you've been there if you use randomized buttons on these sometimes, is you hit it and that split second between <laughs> between the time where you just hit it and you let it go, you're like, oh, that was such a good one. And then you, you feel that you can never get back to what you had there before. So on this one, we could just go back. I did hear that this last one sounded sort of nice. So we can just go back to it here. And again, We've already randomized it, but we can go and adjust the density once it's been done already, which is really nice. So, And one thing that I love is pretty well any of these knobs that you right click, you can set it so you can learn the MIDI control and then just do this and you choose a button at which controls it. But the interesting thing is I took the snare drum here and I did learn and I used my pedal. It picks up the MIDI CC64. But listen to this when we play it. When you see them all lit up. Here, we'll just solo it. And so every time I hit the pedal, it's bringing them in. And you can adjust the density with it too. The only thing with this pedal is it's zero or a hundred. So it's basically, they're all there like this or they're not. But if you map it to a knob or something, then you can adjust the level and as you go, it'll just add more and more. So it's sort of nice when something's playing. It can help you do some interesting drum fills. So that's really, really nice to have. And uh, using the pedal for stuff like this is a whole lot of fun. All right, the number two thing I love in here is a drag MIDI file. You can go to this section here that's called export pattern and you can take the MIDI file and let's just bring this down a little bit. And I'm gonna drag it to three other drum kits that I have here. And you'll notice something once I play it here. So we take 
this pattern here that we set up with the randomization and we're able to play a drum kit or something else, another drum plugin or whatever. And uh, let's go here, but you're gonna notice something when we play it. Now, if you can tell, there's no bass drum. And I was trying to figure out why. And I went into the MIDI and I noticed there's two different bass drums in the MIDI file, but this kit just has a bass drum on there. So the easy way is we just click on here, bring that up, and then all of a sudden it's a normal, it's got a normal kick drum going. But I was wondering, I thought, okay, it might be this, this drum kit that's just not programmed right. So I went to the next one and I tried it, I tried this one. And it was doing the same thing. And when I go to the bottom, there's this one. See, that's where the kick drum is. So we have to bring this one. On the third one, it does the, the same thing. There's our kick drum and there's nothing there. So I was like, okay, well, if all these drum kits are acting the same way, it must be something in Drumazon. So I went in here and I noticed that if you go to the MIDI triggers, you've got two different bass drum triggers here. And I'm not sure why they have it set up that way. I'm sure there's some <laughs> reasoning behind it. But if you get rid of this first one here, and then let's go do the export again. So we'll bring this back down. We'll replace that one. That one. And that one. And if we go listen to that one right away, the kick drum is there, everything works normally. And then you can go in and make any changes to the MIDI file, you can change your drums, you can do whatever you want with this as a bass. So it's really nice. And if you need to, you can go back here, randomize again, and get some different patterns that you can drag in there. The third thing I love about this is how many presets there are. They say there are a thousand presets and they're split up into three preset sections. So one of them is the scene, which basically controls the whole thing. It'll have a whole bunch of different settings for the effects. It'll have a specific drum kit, a specific pattern, but you can mix and match. So if we do this one here and we want just a different drum kit, we go until we find something good and then we're like, okay, we want to change the pattern. So that was the drum kit we were changing here in the second one. So we're taking the same sounds, but we're building a different pattern onto it. And again, you can randomize stuff here if you need to. And then we can go and change the drum kit or change the whole thing, get a whole different feel. And the interesting thing is if you click in the box, it'll give you some information about each preset, like which tempo it's meant for. It doesn't mean you have to use it at that one. This one's meant for 135 BPM. Sounds great at 120. And you can go here if you're doing something slower and here, we'll slow this one down. We'll do 80. And then if you want to go up to 135, we'll remove the 80 here. So these are the sounds that are meant to work well at that speed. But it's really nice to have that all set up and to have an idea of what the beats are meant to do. There's just so many you can tell from here, like we're only at the M's. And anyways, there's so many here. It's just nice to have so many presets in here. And I'm gonna do a bonus one here because I discovered this one after I planned this video. And uh, it's really interesting. This tap mode here is basically made for if you have pads to drum on. But the interesting thing with this is if you hit over a certain velocity, it'll accent the note. So you don't have a range of velocities where the harder you hit, the louder it is. It's basically two, you have normal and accented like a whole lot of drum machines are. But what happens is if you're using a MIDI controller like Ableton Push or you're using a keyboard, if you hit the keys softly, it'll be just the normal one. And if you hit them over 64 in velocity, it automatically goes to accented. So if you're hitting the keys a little bit harder, you've got the louder sounds. And if you hit them softer, you've got the softer sounds. Like I said, it's just those variations of the two, but it's sort of nice to be able to come up with some patterns. All right, I hope this can help you make some great music. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.